So I wanted to document uh, the or my last dive for abalone in 2017, and it might actually be the last time I dive for abalone altogether because they are going to be closing the uh, abalone diving forever. Um, yeah, uh, I've been diving for abalone for, I don't know, 15 plus years now, and uh, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, the waters are rough, um, but I, I've always had fun out there. I used to take up a, a little Toyota Corolla hatchback up the coast, um, load it up and uh, come back, and uh, my friend introduced it to me. It was uh, a lot of fun. I mean, first time I went out, uh, the waters were super rough, um, and yeah, I just kept coming back. Um, this one right here is actually the last ab that I ever pulled, last legal ab, um, good size. Um, it's not the biggest ab ever, he's about 9 inches plus, but he's got a lot of meat and he is super, super thick. I just want to document uh, what it takes to gut an ab. We're preparing for a pretty big meal here. I've already done two of them, um, got my gut bowl. I do keep the shells, um, I give them away as gifts or whatnot, or whoever wants it, and uh, those are the other two. But this guy here is uh, my last ab. Um, I'm going to really miss doing this. I wanted to do a video just so that I could remember what it was like to process these abs, um, maybe for you know future generations to see as well. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, first thing I typically do is flip it over. They have, I call these air holes. I don't really know what they are because they're underwater. I don't know if they really breathe. Um, but I take a look at the air holes, they're only on one side, and typically that's where I pry from. So I have my abalone bar. I will usually jam it right up in there, and I'll slowly start working it out. And I want to try to leave as little meat in there as possible. This guy is still alive, but um, I try to move relatively quickly. Um, just in case if they do feel pain, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of sad because abalone, um, they've been around for years uh, and it takes a long time for them to grow. And a few years back, five, six years ago, um, up on the Northern California coast, they had a, um, a really bad algae bloom and I don't know if it was a disease or what it was, but it took out a bunch of starfish. And starfish are the main predators for sea urchin. Um, sea urchin being, I've got a couple of them in here. Those little buggers in there. Um, but um, sea urchin eat kelp. Abalone eat kelp. Sea urchin grow really, really quickly. So um, I consider them like rats of the sea. I do. I used to like eating sea urchin. I'm a little less uh, enthusiastic about them now. But um, yeah, anyways, the sea star population was wasted away. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the sea star population was wasted away, and then the sea urchins um, came by, took over, um, ate up all the kelp, and now everybody is starving. Um, abalone are super, super slow growing, which makes it a little more difficult for them to recover. I'm hoping that they do recover, but again, um, the fishing game is deciding right now whether to ban abalone diving altogether uh, for uh, for sportsmen uh, it's been illegal for years um, south of the Golden Gate Bridge and it's also been illegal for years for commercial diving and you know it's like even though it's kind of sad that I may never dive for another abalone ever again um, you know it's like it if it helps to preserve them I'm all for it I mean I, I've always been um, we should follow the rules, you know, it's like, I, I would turn in a poacher in a heartbeat. Um, there's a shell right here, I think this one might have been a little bit nicer, but it's got a nice, uh, nice good size. Um, but yeah, this is my last abalone shell. But anyways, uh, losing track there. Um, next thing I typically do once I gut them is, there is a flap of meat around here, and there's also a gut sack that sits around here. A lot of times, not a lot of times, it's just kind of rare. If you go through the gut sack, um, if you pulled an abalone from a sandy area, you might sometimes find what they call like an abalone pearl. 
Um, I have not been so successful with that. And you know, to be honest, I typically don't like reaching through um, and going through the gonads of any animal or person uh, looking for pearls or any other treasure. But um, I usually go cutting right around the lip. I try not to bust the gut sack open and just kind of saw my way through and you know some people say oh yeah I use a super sharp knife you know I just use a cheapo this is probably made in China um, serrated knife and it served me really really well um, I don't think you need anything fancy and this is just kind of my own way of doing it um, figure it out on my own just as I went along um, sure there's a lot of other ways to process it there's a ton of ways that, you know that you can cook this stuff but it's a good piece of meat here Mm. Yeah, um, if it's fresh, which this guy was alive, I hope he's dead now. Um, you can eat these raw. They're super, super good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You know, it's a little bit of emotional too, but that I will never be able to uh, die for these suckers. But this is a gut sack. You pull it. I separate them. There are. There's like a set of. I call them teeth. I have really no idea what they are that's right up here and their mouth is up up in this area but they have these things uh, they're kind of hard maybe their teeth but again they uh, abalone eat kelp and I haven't put a dive video out in a long time but um, the kelp forests have essentially wasted away the sea urchin which used to taste good don't taste good anymore because they're starving as well but the sea urchin it's easy -er for them to survive without food then is abalone. Um, I don't know, maybe if I can try to find a, a picture of one of my past abalones where the uh, the meat is so shrunken. I mean, you could have like a nine inch plus shell and it looks like the meat came from like a, I don't know, like a five inch or six inches, you know, it's, it's small. Um, I don't know if you guys can see her here, but um, abalone have, they have water. When they die, uh, I don't know when they die, but um, they'll typically hold a lot of water so if you let it sit you know a puddle will form um, anyways I, I don't know what it was for I, you know I'm not a scientist not a biologist or anything like that it's just kind of what I learned um, but next thing I usually do is I'll clean off the ab and kind of scrape off any of the guts that I didn't get to with my fingernails just to clean her up and you know prep her for cooking but yeah, again, this is the uh, last dab I've ever gotten, or that will have ever gotten, possibly, unless they uh, reopen it next year, and they may, And but I have a feeling it's going to be under heavy, heavy restriction, which, again, I'm totally okay with. The current size limit is a 7-inch ab. Uh, most of the abs that we pull are well over 7 inches. That they may be raising the minimum to 8, which I'm fine with, too, but um, if they close the season altogether, forever you know so be it um that's okay but uh yeah this is the last one i'm ever gonna do so yeah um other than that uh i hope to have a great abalone meal and i plan to share with friends and family and uh, other than that that's about it so i hope the rest of you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys around